So what we're saying here is the job becomes the primary unit of analysis. It's not the product. Forget about the product. Forget about the customer. Forget about the competition. We want to focus on that job that the customers hire this product for, and we're going to deconstruct it into its process steps and figure out how they're measuring success along every step of the way. That's the focus. And then, then we're going to come up with solutions that address it because it's really the job's perfect execution that reflects the customer's measure of value. And when we're focused on requirement gathering, we're not getting requirements on the product, we're getting requirements on the job. Now, this uh, chart over here shows the job of storing recorded music, and you can see some of the, the metrics or the outcomes that people use to judge success when getting that job done, like increase the number of songs that are available, or minimize the likelihood the music's distorted, or minimize the likelihood of damage during normal use, or minimize the amount of storage space that's needed, or increase the degree to which your music sounds live. Think about those statements. Were those requirements on storing and retrieving recorded music five years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago? They are. You look at those and go, gosh, that's odd, because I always thought that requirements changed quickly over time. And here we are, we're looking at a set of statements that are valid, they were valid 30 years ago, and they're still valid today. And they'll be valid in the future. Do you want to, want to know why? Any guesses? It's because the job hasn't changed. It's still the same job. What's changed are these solutions over the side. We've seen vinyls, we've seen LPs, we've seen DVDs, or CDs, I should say. We've seen MP3. We've seen things we should have seen, like A-Track. Uh, so there's been a variety of technologies that have come up over the years that have addressed this job to be done. Question? But is the satisfaction change relative Absolutely. to the solutions that are now available? Like, yeah. are you unsatisfied with vinyl? When the vinyl yeah. was available? So the question is, you know, are, are you, does the satisfaction change? And that's, that, the answer is yes, that's the exact point. What happens is new technologies come along to better satisfy those needs. The needs are the same, but new technologies, like you can see those numbers in there, uh, increase the degree to which the music sounds live. Vinyl, you give it a five for, out of its scale of 10 for satisfaction. CDs, much better quality, up to a seven. MP3s, actually down to a six. The quality there may not even be as good as CDs. But look at some of the others. You know, minimize the likelihood of damage during normal use. Vinyl versus CD versus MP3. You see you know, greater levels of satisfaction over time with those different technologies. So what's the next best winning technology? It's the one that's going to take you know, that, that six to a nine along with all the other things. What is that today? I don't know, it doesn't matter. But when it comes along, when the technology comes along that does that and all the other things, that's the one you want to bet on because it's helping customers get the job done better. All right, let's not focus on the technology, the solution over here, because that's a variable that changes over time. Let's stay on this side of the equation and focus on this job and the customer's needs because that's a stable focal point around which you want to create value. So uh, how are these metrics captured? Um, there's been a lot of debate over the years as to what method's best for capturing customer inputs. And I know ethnography is big these days, observational research. And um, we use all different methods. Um, and I'll just go through them in a second. But the key point here is it really doesn't matter which method you use. You can capture good statements, good uh, outcome statements, these metrics, using any method if you know what kind of input you're looking for. You can turn any customer interaction into a good interaction if you know the input you're looking for. And if you don't know the input you're looking for, none of these methods will work. You know, is ethnographic research better? It might be slightly better for one reason. You can actually see what the customer is trying to do. You're actually looking at the job they're trying to get done. And if you're clever at observing it, you can pick out what they're doing wrong and, and extract those metrics. But still, you have to know what input you're looking for. And once you know you're looking for those, uh, those, uh, those metrics, you can get them through one-on-one -one interviews, phone interviews, focus groups. We've gotten them using every method. The way we do this, we, can, we do personal interviews first to define the job map. Now this sets your bounds. If you don't do this first, you'll fail. And the reason I say that is you won't know when you have all the requirements. Because again, we're trying to solve this equation, find the solution that addresses these unmet needs. You need to know all the customer's needs. How do you know when you have all? Well, you need to know the entire job they're trying to get done and get outcomes so these metrics for every one of these process steps. When you've done that, you're done. Now, if you don't have that job map, you won't know when the job begins or ends, and you won't know when you're done. So it's critical to create that job map first, right, first step. And we do that with personal interviews because it's economically sound to do it that way. Then we do ethnographic interviews, but the reason we do these is so the interviewer can gain context of the situation. All right, so we're not doing this so the interviewer can observe needs, observe latent, unarticulated needs. 
All right. Uh, what we're doing this for is so the, the um, interviewer can understand the context in which the job's getting done, making them a better interviewer. Then third step, use any method you want, personal interviews, ethnographic, focus groups, one-on-ones, phone in, anything you want to go talk to customers. Now that you have the context in your head as an interviewer and you know what input you're looking for, you can turn any interaction into a good interaction to capture these statements. Okay? And the job map, again, is used to ensure all the needs are captured. If you don't have that, you won't know when you're done.